Now, what and about those who, what about those billions who are not Christians? Can they communicate with God through their own religion? Uh, I believe that since God paid an infinite price for mankind, I believe that you cannot communicate with God except in the sense that you can ask him to save you through faith in Jesus. So how does that differ from the uh, fundamentalist Muslims who believe that only through uh, Allah you can reach God? Well, as you know, as, as Muslims become more religious, they, become, they tend to become more violent and follow jihad. As Christians become more religious, they tend to become more peaceful and more loving. And in my opinion, there's only one true religion, and that's Christianity. That's the well, only I'm way. Not, I'm, not, I'm not here to argue with you in any way. However, I still believe that with all of the billions of people on earth, there are many paths to God. I cannot, I cannot believe for a moment that God would, all, would want only a single path. If you look at and, and, I, and I've been attacked. I've been attacked on this subject before by fundamentalist Christians who called me every name under the sun, and I'm willing to accept that they're intolerant of my viewpoint. But the fact of the matter is, I believe that by saying only your way is the pure way, you're saying all the other people are less less than human. You're saying they're four fifths a human, and I can't accept that. But hey, I respect I respect your way. I also respect people who are atheists. I think they're wrong. I think they're gambling, and they're going to be found out to be wrong at the end of the road. I certainly can't prove it. If I could, I would. But, uh, again, I, you know, and I've been attacked for this. I guess I didn't expect it to happen again today, but it was inevitable that it would if I bring up religion. I may as well give you my religious perspective for whatever it's worth. It's one man's opinion. I want you to take a pencil in your head, and I want you to draw a circle. Can you do that? Draw that circle in your head? I'm very good at pictographic verbiage. I can have you understand things through pictures in your head. You drew a circle in your mind. Now draw a little circle in the middle of that circle. Now imagine that that little circle is the tunnel to God. Now take lines from the big circle and draw them to the little circle. Okay? And those lines can represent any one of the principal religions on earth whether it be Judaism, Christianity, Islam, Buddhism, or Hinduism. I'm using the five principal religions on earth because they represent the majority of people. I'm rec I recognize there is Zoroastrianism and, and other religions, but I would like to focus for the moment only on the five principal religions of the earth. And I would say that each of these religions are conduits to that tunnel to God, and that if people truly believe in their religion and they practice their religion, and it brings them closer to God, meaning they can behave more godly and nicer to their fellow man, so be it. But the minute one religion starts to say, only my religion can get people to God, all the other religions are less perfect than mine, therefore all the other people are less perfect than I, therefore we are creating conflict, and therefore the religion fails. Any religion that says the other religions are less than them, or it is a lesser religion is creating conflict, which is in opposition to the teachings of, of the religion itself. I want you to understand what I just said to you. It's actually quite a brilliant concept if you analyze it, which is that if you say that your religion is so exclusive that only those in your religion can see God or reach, reach God, what you're doing is creating conflict between yourself and the rest of humanity. And in so doing, you're violating the tenets of your own religion or the teachings of your own religion. Because, after all, analyze any religion. I don't care what the religion is. I can boil any religion on earth down to one phrase. And I've done this before. Since it's summer, I'll do it again. Which is, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Think about it. Think about it. It says it all. I mean, there are ways to arrive at that concept of kindness. But at the end of the day, most religions teach the same thing. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. It's kind of easy to remember that. I mean, you could practice every tenet of your religion and be the worst SOB on the planet. And what does that make you? What does that make you? You're a religious man, but you push aside a, a woman who's nine months pregnant on an airplane to get, to, to get a seat? What does that make you? A holy man? It makes you a pig. And I've seen it happen. I mean, and so forth and so on. Or you believe in your religion and you're willing to cut someone's head off to prove how holy you are. Well, this is all fraudulent. If you're that much of a zealot and you're excluding every other religious 
practice as less than yours, you're going to create war. And so, therefore, since I am a man of peace, and I think that all people should see God, I believe that all religions, in my mind, are equally valid for those who believe in them, so long as it leads to the same conclusion, which is that do unto others as you would have them do unto you, or you want to reverse it, do not do unto others as you would have them not do unto you, whichever way you want to look at it. So that's it. That's what I mean by... Uh, uh, my, that's my view, rather, of the whole thing, you know. Now, again, it's one man's opinion. I know many of you are going to be angry at me, and you're going to start. I, I get emails for years after a thing like this. I, and I appreciate that you're angry at me, if you are. How about if you're not angry at me, and you agree with me, and you're a Christian? Because I've had Christian theologians call me and write me and say, you're right. Those who don't see, and they're devout Christians, and they see it my way. So don't assume that your view of Christianity is the only way either. You may have been mistaught, by the way, to think that only your way is the right way. Just as I say to you, I'm an individual with one, one viewpoint. And the day religion starts to create strife is the day religion is not doing its job, so to speak. What is the meaning of religion? Tell me what the meaning of religion is. Is it not to give man peace and show him a way? What is the meaning of a religion to begin with? Let's start from the beginning. Let's clear the slate. Get out your mental eraser. Child is born. A child has nothing. A child has no religion. A child may have a soul or may not have a soul. I believe there are children who are born without souls. I believe there are children who are born evil. Uh, and, of course, they become Democrats. But putting aside the, the, uh, the humor for the moment, there are children who have souls... And the soul does not know what it is. It could be raised in any any church. It could be raised in a synagogue. It could be raised in a Buddhist temple. It could be raised in a Hindu temple. It could be raised as an atheist. It could be raised as a socialist. It could be raised as a communist. And, of course, the communists want to grab your child uh, before that child has been developed. And they want to brainwash that child because they understand that hearts and minds are important to grab. And that's why they have brainwashed your children through the NEA and through the public schools into believing that only a large government, only a big government, only government can help them, and government is good. And so therefore, <clears throat> again, the, the religious will become the political at a certain point, which is why the communists said that religion is the opiate of the masses, because they recognized that people who truly believed in God were un, uh, unlikely to convert to statism. They would not worship the Obama of their time. They would not worship... Barbara Boxer of the Barbara Boxer Politburo types of their time because they would not bow down to false idols. And Obama's a false idol, make no mistake about it. The man has held himself up as an idol to be worshipped, not a president to lead a nation. The man has narcissism to the nth degree. The man has many psychological problems that are not being discussed because the people in the media are too close to the situation to recognize that we have a psychological mess on our hands with this president. And uh, one day it'll be discussed, whether it's 50 years from now or five years from now, the books will start to come out. Savage. Talk 910 KNEW. Here's Michael Savage. Well, we've stumbled into a minefield talking about religion. I guess it's a break from politics. They're intermingled in a certain way. But let's stick to the religion for a minute. I have been in places where I have felt the the wall shake with fervent belief. And it's when you're only only when you're with a congregation of true believers, whatever the religion may be, that you can truly feel the thunder of God. I, I mean it's very hard to feel it alone. Many of you can. You can be on a ship in the middle of the sea and in, in the middle of a storm, you'll see God. And I've felt Things like that in my life. I've been on ships where I almost died. I've almost died falling off a cliff. I mean, you can see God in many ways, positive and negative. But I want to stick to the religion for a minute. I remember, for example, being, when I was a kid, I went into a, uh, there was a, uh, a brother Billy in the streets of New York. And he was a street preacher. And I was uh, interested in meeting, you know, even the craziest people on earth at the time. At the end of that day, I wound up driving him up to Harlem, 